I was recently notified in the comments of my last video about Moray being visible in some of the sample shots that I showed. He asked me if I was using ProRes, but I told him all the shots were in Cinema DNG Raw, and I didn't really think the different codec would change the intensity of the Moray effect. After looking back at some of the example footage, I realized how bad the Moray looked in some of these shots. As an example, in this shot of the building, you could see the Moray effect stand out along the close edges of the bars. In all the example shots, I used the Panasonic 15mm f1.7, which fringes poorly on edges even stopped down to lower apertures. Although some of my other shots that I recorded with other lenses that don't fringe as much as the Panasonic showed very minimal signs of this effect. This made me wonder if it was a combination of the lens and the fact that the Pocket Cinema sensor has no low pass filter. So today I'm going to be testing the Moray effect with four lenses that I have. Some fringe poorly and some barely fringe at all when using optimal apertures. The first lens I'll be testing is the Panasonic 15mm which commonly shows a lot of signs of fringing along edges. The second lens is an older Azanuma 80-250mm which fringes horribly long edges. Edges. Coming in third is another Azanuma lens, although this one is the 28mm Prime which contains fringing long edges much better than the 80-250mm. Lastly is the Panasonic 45-150mm which is a cheaper lens but does contain fringing well. In the first test I'm using the Panasonic 15mm and I set the aperture to f4 which is where the lens performs best at. In the test footage you could clearly see the lines on the tie creating the Moray effect. Also the line seems to be creating a bit of an orange and blue blend that looks really bad. In our second test with the Azanuma 28mm which is set to a f2.8 aperture shows a faint version of the effect. Also, the moray seems to be a bit green now. In the third test with the Panasonic 45-150mm, the aperture is set to f4 and shows very minimal signs of the moray effect. The lens seems to perform best out of the four. Normally to show moray, you need movement in the shot, although when I was testing the Azanuma 80-250mm, to I forgot to make the time move around. But in this test, you can clearly see a completely different type of moray pattern forming along the lines without any movement of the subject. This just shows how much the harsh fringing amplifies the effect of moray within the shot. From the test shown, you could see that even though moray is caused by the lack of a low pass filter, the lens, which is the first thing the light passes through, can have dramatic effects on the moray seen in the final image. As an example to explain the way the lens affects the moray caused by the sensor, let's just assume I have two lines and the lens in this example causes those two lines to fringe heavily. This then will be translated over to the sensor which sees the two heavily fringing lines and creates almost a third line in between the two. To explain this better, here's a visual representation of the moray effect. Initially, you could see the moray effect, but it's not that strong. Although, as I increase the glow along the lines, you can clearly see the moray effect becomes much stronger and is a lot more noticeable than before. This is very similar to what's happening in the camera, minus the digitalization of the moray once it hits the sensor. To put it simply, in order to reduce moray being present in a shot, use lenses that don't fringe poorly or use optimal apertures specific to the lens that reduces fringing. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Also, go follow me on Instagram for behind the scenes and other content.